We're getting married tomorrow. Yeah, family, we're getting married, but I'm so tired, yeah? <laughs> so tomorrow is the civil wedding. I see in my dreams when we'll I see. Be, we'll be getting married. Come here. Ah, You're let's start romantic home. life. She's wearing a glove. And deep down in my heart, I believe. Now you feel like you feel you need. The one I've been waiting for all my life. Uku sawa lai, uti mala ikala mabawa ya, uti mala kige. We show, we show. Okay, so we're getting married tomorrow. Tomorrow's the civil wedding, and we will be legally Mr. and Mrs. Gilberton. So today is day six of the wedding week of the wedding week. Right now we're picking up my bridal robe and then um, I'm gonna head to the girls. We have a sleepover today. I'm feeling much better. Yesterday, yesterday guys, yesterday my bridal shower had to be canceled or well, postponed because I wasn't feeling well but today I'm feeling much much better. So I'm happy about that. But yeah we're here. We're picking up the bridal robe and, and Charles has been moving stuff to the location all day. We had a little mishap this morning. I had to fight somebody but I've repented since then, so. We were supposed to pick up my robe today, but unfortunately, this girl is not done yet. And I need it for Saturday, so she said she's gonna Uber it. I'm just hoping she'll finish in time because. And that's what I think with Jana. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It doesn't matter, but still, give it or not, there's a standard in this movie. So, you know. Francis has been going with Charles all morning to drop off things and to run last minute errands. So, time is near, the time is close, and we're just getting ready. How do you feel, Francis? How long have you known Charlie for? I've been trying to count in about seven years. Seven years? Wow. Because I first found about her when I was in uh, uni. Uh -huh. Yes. So I got to know Charlie through, um, and why I don't think I should say this yet. But I got to know Charlie through my junior brother. Oh. Uh, okay, yeah, we got really close and all that. The rest followed. Wow. Okay. Are today getting ready for his wedding tomorrow. Again? So then here you are today getting ready for his you wedding know, tomorrow. It's it's we've been building up to it's, it, it's just like I said the other time, the heart breaks off. <laughs> <laughs> Hopping along the way, but we're here. Yeah. We are here we're here so, so we're just so excited that uh, it's like old best man. Someone to go fight. Now you're doing peace. Yeah, let me tell you, guys. I know you're my poor, my poor, my poor all day. I have fought in the market. I fought in the restaurant. I'm tired. Everybody wants to get at me today, and they just don't know that I'm not the one. I'm not the one. Like, if you know me, you know I'm not the one. I have fought. For me to. It's been, I have, I have an angry spirit to me to fight somebody, so. <laughs> Why are you going to fight somebody? I don't know. Why are you going to fight them? Fight them, fight them, fight them. Maybe, maybe I somebody is fighting us. So maybe I'll go in the street and we'll fight them. Yeah, that's the best way. Yeah. Because rain or shine will do this wedding. Or you and it. And for you people that are calling me and they're trying to figure out the video, let me warn you and warn you and say, then I stand. Well, please, stop people. Stop people. Stop oh, I didn't tell you guys a story. Stop if your name is not on the list, you're not entering. And I'll just put you here at the door. Make sure that you're not entering. I don't understand the plan. They were planning to come and do what?
I'm getting married tomorrow. My birthday tomorrow. I'm just here to tell you that she getting married tomorrow. I'm getting married tomorrow. She getting married tomorrow. She getting married tomorrow. Period. Hey yo, Lala. What? Getting married tomorrow. She getting married tomorrow. She getting married tomorrow. Lala. Don't say that. That's what I'm saying. So today we have barely recorded, but it's been a day, so we'll take it like that. But. Look how we're sitting in Anyway, but mm -hmm. um, our discussion question for the night is mm -hmm. so first of all, I'm sleeping over because it's my last day as a single woman. And moving forward, if I want to have sleepovers, I have to ask permission. So okay, I'm having my last um, sleepover in my own authority. So, so um, our discussion question. <laughs> Our discussion question for the night is Does God have favorites? Because I saw a tweet today about a girl saying she stopped being a Christian. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason, I missed the church and her church hurt. Part of the reason is because she realized that God has favorites, and if you're not his favorite, you're not his favorite. And she continued by saying she prayed for so many things. And she trusted God for so many things, and she never ever got her prayers answered. I thought it was wild because I can't believe, I can't imagine a life where God doesn't answer your prayers. But she said she's never ever had her prayer answered before, and rather when good things were happening in her life, she felt like God was rather taking them away. So, you being seasoned women of God, what do we think? Does God have favorites? <laughs> Why I gotta switch it to me? <laughs> Don't put this on uh, If I may. <laughs> I'm I don't think God has favorites in the in the way that we think of favorites. Mm -hmm. I think that God takes us each through different journeys and sometimes what we see is the reward for being obedient in our own journey. And um, we may look like favoritism on the outside because we don't know what the person has to do mm -hmm. on the inside. Apart from that, especially when it comes to when it comes to the you know when it comes to attaining of things with God, um, it's, it's, I don't even know how to word this. Like sometimes God wants to work on our heart, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not hard for God to give us things. And that's something I definitely feel like mine. This is not hard at all for God to give us things. And he's very willing to give us things um, according to his will. Again, according to his will for us. But sometimes we don't want the will of God. We want our own will. So we don't get things that are in alignment with our will but not God's will. We sometimes get upset, angry at God, um, you know, dejected, we feel rejected, we leave the faith. Um, I think it's definitely more than that. I think what we haven't come to realize is just how rewarding the journey is. But that just that journey of discovering with God, that journey of being molded by God, um, you know, that journey of hearing God's no and then seeking clarity. That journey alone is very fulfilling. But we're not willing to submit to that. We're not willing to submit to God's timeline. Sometimes. Um, we're not willing to stop and ask God, okay, why? Um, and even sometimes when we do hear the why, we're not, you know, we just, we don't want it. Um, so I think it takes a lot of humility um, to walk with God, a lot of submitting to his sovereignty, because he's very sovereign. And he can do whatever he pleases, and his will and his right to do whatever he pleases. Because we didn't create ourselves, and we shouldn't create God. Um, but yeah, that's my little take on it. And it's a blessing. Uh -uh. Um, I think just to piggyback off of what Sandra said in regards to God doesn't have favorites in the way that we think he has favorites. I the, okay, well first of all, the ans my answer is no, I don't think that God has favorites. Um so to big piggyback off of what she said, I think when people think of favorites when it comes to faith, I think they automatically think pastors, preachers, evangelists, like those who are like in the 
forefront. Right. Yeah, with the titles and stuff, right? And so I think when it comes to favorites, and they're, they're thinking that it's because, well, they have this and they have that, or they have the mic, right? But I think, personally, I think that there will there'll be people that will have so much power, that will walk in so much power, that will not have the mic. Right? So for example, I will use myself as an example because I'm claiming to Jesus in you, okay? I may not necessarily be a pastor. I may not necessarily be a pastor's wife. I may not necessarily be an evangelist or whatever the case is or whatever the title is. But I believe that I will get to a level of some sort of relationship, a level in a relationship with God that he will give me so much revelation. He will give me so much understanding. He will give me so much wisdom that some people may not come come to get or come to attain, right? And I think it goes back to what Sandra was saying about your obedience in with God and what you have to endure in order to get there. Because obviously, it's not my anointing is not your anointing. Um, my level of understanding and stuff. There's levels to this, like for real, for real. Let let's be honest. There's levels, right? And so, what I have to do. It personally for me what I have to do in my household is not what Sandra has to do right and so I believe that some people will get to um, will have a level of revelation or deep deep things in God that they may not necessarily have a title at the end of the day right they may not necessarily be a pastor they may not necessarily be a preacher they may not necessarily be whatever it is but they will have a deep 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 revelation or understanding or um they will get to some sort of realm in god that some people will never attain because i think we fail to realize there's so much in god that we have not even seen there's so much so so much that we have not seen so much that we haven't even gotten to because again there's levels right so i think people some people will get there but they won't necessarily carry the title that's that's what it is when I saw the post, I felt bad for her because I didn't understand. No, another way. Oh, please go to your answer first. Oh, my answer is I don't think I have to I don't think I have to I do think um, there are different things that play into answering prayers. So, the timing, uh, the motive. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything, you know, behind the scenes or a certain pattern that may be hindering that answered prayer? But God wants to give it to you. But in his, in your family, there's a pattern of this being happening mm -hmm. and you're not getting it, right? Mm -hmm. Different things like that I think people need to factor in. But I think in a moment like that, um, her post, what I just saw was somebody who was just screaming yeah. out for, you know, Tell sharing her disability disappointment right in her relationship with God and her disappointment and how she felt and obviously all of the comments some of them will make it will solely focus on the fact that she you know she feels that God is partial um, and now seeing the fact that this is somebody who wants to try to have that type of intimate relationship with God where nothing is off limits and she just can't attain that um, so no I don't think God has favorites I do think you know, it may feel like he's feeling different people are in different seasons, and I think this is when we need to trust that the first shall come. Like, like everybody gets to try, you know. And remember, there's a scripture in of the workers who go to and work all day, and they also got the same wage, and even those who just joined, like, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, yet everybody, you know, was fairly rewarded. So I think realizing that. God would like, I think one thing that I love is that I know that God will never over. Every seed that I've sown, every prayer that I've prayed, I will get a reward. If it's not look at what I want, but He will always pay me back. God will never over. Mm -hmm. So if I know that I'm pouring into doing the right things, praying and everything, I know that there's a seed that will come out of it. Because seed time and harvest time continue. Mm -hmm. It's just about understanding that it may not look like what I want, it's a look like, right? So, no, I don't think God has favorites. Yes, I do think um, it's a complex, um, you know, case where there might be different things outside of, you know, your physical control that may be hindering you from seeing 
a blessing. But I also think it's also comforting to know that God will never be mine in my harvest time. Yeah. That's good. Good job, guys. Also, for you to Me too. Then I have a question. Yeah, okay. To bounce um, off of you know what I find? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's actually unfortunate that I've heard so many preachers say this before that like God has favorites and you need to do this to be able to earn his favor. And even if they don't outright say it from the way that they preach, like blessing your faiths, <laughs> your faiths that we were talking about yesterday. <laughs> That's how they preach. Girl. <laughs> you are shady. They preach shady. They preach servants like that. That makes you feel like, oh, you gotta do this, this, this to earn God's love and his, his favor. And if you don't do that, that's why you don't have favor. So I feel like I understand where the girl is coming from because we, and, and it's, it's sad because it's, it's low key a form of prosperity gospel, right? Yes. Where you're literally saying that, oh, okay, you. If God has ABNC. favorites. If I do A, B, and C, then you know, then it's I will be a favorite of God. Yeah. And then God will give me favor. But that's not how it works. It's mm -hmm. like all of you guys have said. One, there are methods and principles that God operates by, and when you are able to evoke the principle, then you get the promise or the blessing attached to that certain principle. That's right. why we see unbelievers. Who don't even give a damn about God or what right. he has to do. But they are able to operate on a principle. And yes. so he must honor that principle. Right. And so you you might look from the outside and be like, oh, this is a favorite of God because this person has favor. Mm -hmm. And they don't go to church. And they don't you know, do all the things that you do. And they're not a serious believer. And you feel like you're doing all the right mm -hmm. things. But you're not operating by the principle. And so I think... Like everyone has said, like my answer is, is God does not have favorites, but there are principles that evoke the favor on your life, and there are principles that evoke favor in your life. We're all God's favorites. Like when he came and died, he didn't die for just some people, and those that were saying he did, he, he corrected them. We see in the Bible, he came for everybody, so we're all his favorites, so yeah. Right. Right. So, now the question is, so... Because clearly from what, how the girl was tweeting, right? It just makes me wonder why the people around her in her, maybe her circle or her church community or whatever the case is, why people didn't see that she was drowning. Mm. And if we were there, if we had to advise her or encourage her, what would we say? Um, I would say, not that same time, first of the same if she has this idea of what a relationship with God looks like, you know, in her 10 times the people around her probably see that way. They've probably heard the same thing about, you know, only certain people are like favorites of God and they, they don't get a certain thing is because God didn't want to give it to them, not factoring like the other things that we discussed, right? So it could be a thing where they also didn't know how to help them because they might also have the same question. And I think it also goes back to the fact that in church, we no longer have like this open forum where you can ask questions. And you know, people always say, Oh, don't question God. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to, because I feel like if those questions were asked while she was still very strong in the faith, people would have been able to encourage her, right? If she was able to, you know, be in a space where she can express. Now, we don't know if she did, but based on her teeth, I don't think she ever did. And this is just her first time talking. Excuse me. So, I think that would really be. Things we probably all think the same way. Um, nobody really knows how to answer this. Everybody thinks it's a total out of conversation. I've prayed, I've fasted, I've served God. I'm in the situation where I desperately need this. This is not a want, this is a need. I need to keep the roof over my head. Yes, God is not answering. What do I do? And in that case, how do you help someone mm -hmm. when you yourself don't even know where your next meal is coming from? Or even mm -hmm. if you do, you give them money today they still come back the next day needing more because we live in a society where you need money for everything. Right. So how then will you now encourage that person? And then they ask you, okay, so what do I do next? What are you going to say? Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's really it. Like, just sometimes we don't want to give the space to ask a question. 
So if you can't ask questions, then there's no form to discuss things and be open with your emotions, to be open when you're doubting your relationship with God, when you're not understanding what he's doing, when you feel like you should be so much more ahead, but you're not, and you just want to be stoic and act like, oh, you still read your Bible and go to church, and that's, you know, enough. Well, we all know it. It's okay to doubt. It's okay, like, it's okay to doubt, but it's not okay to stay in doubt, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to be like, God, I do not get it. Like, why is so, so, so not working out? How are you going to fix this? What do I need to do? If you need to scream, scream. Like, we always read the Bible and we see how, like, the bro how open and the brokenness of those people were, but yet you feel like we can hide things from God. Like, I've learned to just really approach my relationship with God, like, very childlike. So, if a child is upset, if they're hungry, if they want to sleep, if they don't want to sleep, they'll let you know. So, um, I think things would have maybe been different for her, I'm not trying to put blame on her. But if she was in an environment and if church in general allowed for a scene where people were able to open up and listen, I have my relationship with God is not where it is right now. I don't even have the strength to serve. Not going out there and serving because, oh, if you're on the schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Literally being open and honest with that. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm struggling right now. I can't really lift up my voice to sing this song when I know once I get on the stage, bills are panning up. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back home being depressed and figuring out why my life is not what I thought it would look like, right? But everybody comes to church, everybody smiles, everybody looks nice, and everybody goes home. Meanwhile, we're not really discussing like the meat of the matter. And that is, and I think that's really where, as a church, we need to do better. Um, as Christians, we need to be open. We will fall short of His grace. He already died for our sins. He already knew it. Like you literally be off by your way. Like there's nothing in our journey that catches God by surprise, you know? Um, so I think that's really the big one. Lack of honesty and like transparency in the body of Christ. When we struggle, when we don't get it, when it doesn't make sense, when it's not fun. You know, things like that. How about you, Lady T? <laughs> No, you were sleeping. No, 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 you guys. No, you guys. This girl. You know, I need something to sleep because I heard her. Yeah, she was sliding into sleep. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. I'm not sleeping. What did she say? She was talking about not pushing yourself out there to serve when you don't feel like that. No, you are a mess. <laughs> You know what I think? <laughs> I think um, the church needs to do a better job at teaching on relationships. The only type of relationship it teaches on is romantic, and it doesn't yeah. do a great mm -hmm. job of that either. But the emphasis is so much on romantic; they stop. They 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 haven't really tapped into teaching on the importance of like community relationship, mm -hmm. communal relationship having friends, being a good friend, sewing into people, valuing people so that they can be there for you and all of those things. Because many times when we feel isolated, it's because we don't have people. Like right. you can be going through so much in your life and you go to church and you still put on a face, but you don't have anyone to actually be honest, open, transparent and naked with, right? Mm. And so that's where the devil gets you too because he's You're able to isolate. Loved. So I just feel like, yeah, the church needs to do that, thanks. Things signs she's going back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> she's going back to sleep. Dad, I wasn't asleep. Yes, you were. I was resting my No, no, no. 
Do you have anything to say? Because I think yeah, you people have said everything for me. I think for me, I'm going to take a different twist to it. Mm. So when we're asking the first question, the word that came to my spirit was maturity. Mm. So the question I have, because I know you were asking about how like if we're around her, if we're her friend, we'll say to her. Mm-hmm. But the question I have is how did she first approach her relationship with God? Mm. Um, how did she come into it? And second thing is also just thinking about like how she may have had mature people around because we have situations where she has mature people around her seasoned people but she just got into the point where i don't want to hear i've heard all this before it's not working yeah just right that. um you know it's not working i've heard it before i don't want to hear it and also the question of like you know what kind of community does she have what kind of church community does she have mm-hmm. um you know what are what are her personal goals for herself and what does she think that god is calling her to do or what does she think that god is calling her into right um so it, it, in the journey like god really matures us in the process and in the journey right like even to your point and to even add to it like you know showing up when you don't feel like showing up right there's sometimes that you just have to take a break like i've had times where you know i told my pastor like you know i can't do the teaching today because i feel like i'm only reading my bible to teach and i need a break and i was honest with him and he understood and he was like very much so right but sometimes god will require you to show up even when you don't feel like because in that process is a maturing and a um <laughs> there's a maturing that's happening and there's a revelation of god that is that's that's in the process that you won't see unless you walk through that process mm-hmm. there's a revelation of god that comes in the process um so i think it's just more so like you know did she approach a relationship with a thing well let me try this god thing try jesus thing if i do a b c d i get what i want um, you know, how does she have a relationship with God? Who does she have around her? Um, what process is she not submitting to? Um, it may be a thing where she's doing everything right and something is still not working, right? But nonetheless, like God sees everything and he knows everything. And if there's a reason why he's still keeping us in this process, like it's okay to, you know, it's okay to express emotions, it's okay to fuss a little bit, but get back up, dust yourself up and try again, right? Mm-hmm. Because God sees Russia to fall, but the, the Lord delivers them. Oh, Russia to fall, so they get back up. And then many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from it all. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking from experience. Like, I've gone through a lot. It may not be the same experience as her, of course. Um, but I've had my fair share of journey to the point that I told God that even if I was on the street, I won't stop serving Him. Because when I showed up, in the process, I got a greater revelation of God. I was beyond the money, bills being paid, and everything. Mm-hmm. It was more of who God is, yeah. and that held me and continues to hold me. Um, even when I get to the point where I feel like God is not there, I remember how He showed up in the past. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I have questions for her too. And if I, you know, if it was my friend, I will ask her questions, um, challenge thoughts that she may have, and honestly, just offer her comfort because it's not, this work for God is not easy, and the Bible tells us like. I the way and it's not easy, but you know, the Bible said like even the son of man does not have where to lay, lay his head, but he kept going because he had a purpose mm. and he knew his purpose. So, yeah, very good. Okay, thank you for tuning in to our interview. <laughs> um, yeah, any final words? Um, nice. Teresa gets ready tomorrow. Girl, I mean, I was really gonna ask you questions about like getting. How do you feel about you know becoming a missus in two hours? Not two hours. Um, mm-hmm. how do I feel? I feel like I'm a terrible prophecy terrible is being fulfilled. Amen. You can put it on the table to stand up. I feel like, um, and especially you know more than anyone also like. So many prophetic words have gone forth about marriage in my life, especially from, um, well. Yeah, okay, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of words have, <laughs> for, like, have gone forth. <laughs> and, um, so, it's like something that has been anticipated, not simply for the excitement of being married, or not simply for the title or for the ring, but more because of the purpose attached and what. Um, has been told to me that is on the mind of God because of the purpose attack and the doors will open and everything. So I really feel like as, as much as I'm shifting like physically into a new season, I'm definitely sp- um, shifting spiritually into a new season as well. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like um, like everything that 
I have been preparing for will now really come to fruition. Because some people see like what I do and they see like sassy and saved and stuff and they're just like, oh, like, you know, you're doing so much, you're doing so great. But for the past few months, maybe even a year now, I feel like sassy and saved has just been stagnant. And also was even calling me out that like, don't get complacent, eh? Like you have to continue, which we thank God for friends that will call you out. But like, I, I just, it's, it, I haven't really been able to do anything sassy and save wise because I just felt like I was stuck. Like I've done everything, whatever you can think of, I've pretty much done it. Other than have a conference, I feel like I, I've, I've done everything that God has instructed me to do. So I feel like as I'm shifting into this new season, it's going to open a new dimension for the ministry as well. That mm -hmm. I can tap into resources that are untapped and I'm coming with fresh knowledge and, and fresh perspective because I'm in a new area of love, right? I feel like I've poured out everything I can pour out in my single season. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ready now to That's learn good. new lessons and then begin pouring again as I receive. So, yeah. I have a question. Ah, please, I'm taking a single. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I used to sleep now, but I like the first uh, one. I was holding it I had people's time today. Um, this one that said she wanted to sleep. You see? You see now? She's enjoying it. I'm telling you. Uh, no, so this is probably going to be my last question. And I think I'm just curious to know. You know how we were talking earlier and you said, this is before the camera, this is off the camera. Wait, you said, um, what did she say? She said, marriage is not necessarily that she it's not necessarily that she's ready, but it's more about being prepared. Yeah. So what is one thing during your preparation season that you were surprised came in handy? Like, you know, everybody tells you all oh, the big stuff, pray, read books on marriage, um, learn to submit, the, you know, the, the, the general things that people always talk about. But what's that one thing that you did not expect to be? Uh, very useful in this new season of your life that you learned during your prep season? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I don't want to say something cliche, but I think one thing would be